Now, after looking at the past and present of DevOps, let's look at what the future holds. At least this is my prediction of how things are moving and in which direction that they are going in uh, based on my understanding, my experience and uh, where do I see things are, uh, you know, how things are looking at from this point of time. And if you also look at the way things are uh, evolving, uh, it's also, you know, the all the stories that I just talked about, including the CICD, starting with Jenkins and Spinnaker, Kubernetes and Docker, Ansible, uh, is sort of merging with the whole story of DevOps now here on. Because Kubernetes is definitely here to stay. And that has more or less become like a platform on top of which you build things. And one of the very interesting thing that is happening is the service mesh. Again, this is with Kubernetes as a platform in mind where you leverage that and these tools, including Istio or Linkerd, uh, sit on top of Kubernetes and extend the feature of Kubernetes through something called as custom resource definitions. Uh, and then what you what these tools offer basically is, you know, uh, you move away the infrastructure concerns to the platform itself rather than putting it in the code. So right now, if you look at the way things happen, developers also have to consider apart from the business logic, they also have to consider about, hey, if I ha want to do this routing based on, I want to uh, send the request from uh, a particular client, let's say Android and versus iPhone uh, or iOS to certain versions of my applications, uh, you add that logic to the code itself. A lot of routing logic, a lot of networking logic, load balancing, canary releases uh, or canary releases as you may call it, um, are all done as part of the code and you have to make some changes in terms of the, uh, the application logic itself, right? Now that goes away and uh, all of that concern is taken care by the infrastructure itself by extending the features of the infrastructure through Istio or Linkerd, which is also called as a service mesh. And some of the sample features could include telemetry. For example, if you want to collect the data about uh, metrics about, let's say, how long it takes from one service, your request to pass from one service to another, how long it takes in that particular service for the processing itself. So all, all that data can be taken out and sent to the monitoring system through uh, some of the telemetry features. Intelligent routing is where you can do a lot of cool things like, you know, um, you can send certain traffic for a certain user or certain set of users, which are your beta customers to a specific service or traffic from certain client like iOS versus Android to certain versions of your services. You can also do more advanced things such as, you know, uh, redirecting or mirroring the traffic in your production in the staging environment uh, for a better uh, load testing rather than generating a simulated loads and so on. Uh, you can cut canary releases, you can add application resilience by, um, you know, adding the retries. So you don't have to do that at the application level. All of this can be done at infrastructure level. For example, service A communicates with service B. Service B is not responding. So what does service A do? It should retry or it should add a circuit breaker um, or you, it can add a timeout and all of that can be done or achieved at the infrastructure level with service mesh, which is a very interesting field that is developing right now. In fact, Google along with IBM and Red Hat and a lot of other companies have started working on these technologies. Uh, it, it, you can inject faults and uh, just to test the resilience of your application and let's say uh, increase the delay between one service to another and see how other systems and services respond to that. So all of this is possible with service mesh. Again, all of this sits on top of Kubernetes as a platform. There's also interesting development from the DevOps point of view. So if you're aware of Linux Foundation, which also leads the CNCF. CNCF stands for Cloud Native Compute Form Foundation, it, which is a non-profit body. It's a body of Linux Foundation itself. Along with CNCF, this year in 2019, made of that, uh, Linux Foundation has started a new initiative, a new body called as CDF. CDF now stands for Continuous Delivery Foundation. And a lot of tools which fall under the category of DevOps 
will become part of CDF eventually. So just like how Kubernetes and related projects are part of CNCF, CDF will have or already has Jenkins and related projects. And then there are many other projects which will be part of CDF in future as I foresee. Some of the interesting projects from CDF stable are these. By the way, you could also check out the course that I've authored for Linux Foundation and CDF by name DevOps and SRE Fundamentals Implementing Continuous Delivery with the course code LFS261 which takes you through a step-by-step -step implementation of continuous integration and continuous delivery using tools such as Jenkins and Spinnaker. In future, it would also have Jenkins X and Tekton. Let's look at all of these uh, developments, new developments in the world of uh, CICD and CDF. Now with Jenkins, I've already mentioned that Jenkins has an integration with Docker. There is also an integration with Kubernetes in place now. Uh, even though I've not tested it, um, you know, um, personally, I still see that in the documentation and this is the direction in which we are moving where instead of leveraging or using your Jenkins master slave uh, infrastructure and setting up a lot of slaves which are bare metals, you can s leverage the platform which is Kubernetes and use it to also run your CI jobs with Jenkins. So you'd use and leverage the Kubernetes infrastructure to create disposable, quick environments to run your Jenkins jobs. Jenkins X is a offers sort of a continuous automated CI CD for the applications which are cloud native, which run on top of Kubernetes. And what it offers is basically it integrates with um, Jenkins, GitHub, uh, Kubernetes deployments through something called as GitOps and it lets you create a complete repository which would also have the Jenkins file it might you know it will have an integration with Git it will connect with your Git repository set up the triggers hooks and a lot of configurations and it will send the feedback to your pull request and so on for every pull request it can also create automated disposable preview environments to actually see whether the code works or not. And then with using GitOps, it can help you promote the code to different environments uh, and pro create those multiple environments and you know promote the code, automate the deployment and so on. So Jenkins X is an interesting tool which helps you achieve all of this. Tekton, even though this is um, a very new project, started by Google along with IBM, I believe, and this was forked out from a serverless platform on Kubernetes called as Knative. And what it offers is a native Kubernetes resources for specifically for CI and CD. What that means is if you're aware of Kubernetes, there are native resources such as uh, pods, services, replica sets, deployments, ingress, and so on. Similarly, you should be able to create resources such as tasks and pipelines and a few more using Tekton. So what that means is you are instead of using third party tools or additional tools, you should be able to run your CI CD directly from Kubernetes by writing the YAML code that you create for typical Kubernetes workloads and the deployments. And it would work along with Jenkins and Jenkins X, Scaffold, Knative, uh, and then offer you additional features, including blue-green and canary deployments and GitOps workflow and so on. Now, the picture around Tekton is yet to be clear uh, because there is an active development going on right now and this is how the code looks like. So this is an example of a Tekton task on the left-hand side and a pipeline resource on the right, which has a bunch of tasks added. So it will help you create an entire pipeline using the same Kubernetes YAML and the Kubernetes spec that is. And that is the general direction in which the world is moving. So what I foresee in future is Kubernetes being the platform on top of which you would start setting up service mesh. You would integrate all your CI CD on Kubernetes using either tools like Jenkins X or using the native resources such as what Tekton offers. And here I conclude my DevOps story, the past, present, and the future. 
Who am I? My name is Gaurav Shah. I'm a DevOps trainer and consultant. And I, apart from being a corporate trainer, I am a course author where I create uh, courses and publish them online. Uh, this course that I bring here is for the Linux Foundation. However, I also publish the courses under the banner of School of DevOps, which are available on various platforms. So definitely do check them out. Apart from my professional work, I love to travel and I publish my travel stories on Instagram with the handle of Half Time Nomad. So do check it out and follow along if you want to find out which part of the world I am at right now and to read my travel stories. And yes, I look forward to see you in the next sections where we start diving further ahead in the world of DevOps.